Example B, we want to solve the equation 4x squared plus x equals 10 using the method of trial and improvement. So again, we're trying to get the solution value of x that gives us the target number of 10 and we have to round our answer to one decimal place. So again, start by drawing your trial improvement table with our column headings. Remember, in this case, the left-hand side of the equation is 4x squared plus x. Now, we have to start by choosing two consecutive whole number x values such that when you sub them into the left-hand side of the equation, one of them will give you an output value that's bigger than the target number, one of them will give you an output value that's smaller than the target number. Now again, they've been kind, they've told you to start with x as 1. So go to your chosen x values column, and we're going to put 1 down, and we're going to replace everywhere we see x with 1 on the left-hand side. So we're going to have 4, and then 1 squared, plus 1. Again, remember to use brackets when you're subbing a number into an equation or a formula with a power. So again, we can either type this into your calculator, or if it's easier to do, we can do it in our head. 1 squared is 1 multiplied by itself, which is 1. Multiplied by 4 is 4. 4 plus 1 will give us 5. So the output is 5. Now, 5 is clearly smaller than the target number, so we put an S beside it. So, so far, we've chucked 1 into the left-hand side, and we've got an output of 5 that's smaller than the target number. So let's pick the next uh, whole number value of x, which is 2, and then we're going to chuck it into the left-hand side. And again, we can type it into our calculator, or we can do it mentally. So 2 squared means 2 multiplied by itself, which is 4, times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. So this time the output value is bigger than the target number, so I'm going to put a B beside it. So at this moment in time, we have established the gap that the solution value lies between. Because the target number of 10 lies between 5 and 18, then the solution value of x must lie between 1 and 2. Now, we have to narrow this gap. We have to make the gap smaller. So we look at the x values at each end of the gap, which are 1 and 2. You'll notice they have the same number of digits, and their last digit differs by 1. So we now go halfway between them. So the next x value we're going to pick is 1.5. And we're going to chuck 1.5 into the left-hand side. Okay, we can go to your calculator because it's a bit more complicated. Okay, type in carefully, that's going to give 21 over 2, hit SD button, that's going to give us 10 and a half. Now 10 and a half is just slightly bigger than the target number. So again, we have to reevaluate the gap. So when we chucked 1 in, the output was smaller. When we chucked 2 in, the output was bigger. But now when we chuck in 1.5, the output is bigger. So the gap is no longer between 1 and 2, it's now between 1 and 1.5. So we just draw a little line connecting 1 and 1.5. That's where the solution value lies at this moment in time. Now the next value of x that we pick depends on the values of x at each end of the gap. So the current gap is between 1 and 1.5. Now you'll notice that those x values do not have the same number of digits. This one's only got one digit, this one's got two, so we can't go halfway. So instead, we look at the output values that correspond to those chosen x values. So we've got an output value of 5 and an output value of 10.5. We look for the output value here that's closest to the target number. The target number's 10. 
clearly 10.5 is closer to 10 than 5 is. So that means the next x value we pick has to be closer to 1.5 than it is to 1. So it has to be between 1 and 1.5, but it has to be closer to 1.5. So the next x value we're going to pick is 1.4. And we do the same now. We're going to chuck 1.4 into the left hand side of the equation. And again we can go to our calculator and type it in carefully. Hit our SD button, that's going to give us 9.24. And again, the output value 9.24 is just smaller than the target number. So once more, we have to reevaluate the gap. Every time you work out a new, you know, you sub in a new x value and work out an output, you need to reevaluate the gap. So the gap used to be between 1 and 1.5. When we chucked in 1, output was smaller. When we chucked in 1.5, output was bigger. But when we chuck in 1.4, the output is smaller. So we're getting rid of the 1 now. So the gap is now between 1.4 and 1.5. Okay, remember, you chuck in one x value in the, in the gap and your output is bigger. You chuck another x value in the gap and your output is smaller. So that's why the gap is now between 1.5 and 1.4. So now, the next x value we choose depends on the x values at each end of the gap. So these x values have the same number of digits and their last digit differs by 1. So that's how you know we can now go halfway. So halfway between 1.4 and 1.5 is 1.45. And we now sub 1.45 into the left hand side of the equation. So, go back to our calculator. Type in carefully, hit SD button to turn it into a decimal. That's going to give us 9.86. So our output is smaller than the target number. So again, let's reevaluate the gap that the solution value lies between. It used to be between 1.5 and 1.4 because when we chucked in 1.5 we were bigger than the target number. When we chucked in 1.4 we were smaller but when we chuck now 1.45 in we're smaller so we're getting rid of 1.4 now. So the final gap that the solution value lies between is between 1.5 and 1.45. Now the reason it's the final gap is because you now are working with an x value with two decimal places. So x value with two decimal places we stop. We now write down the final gap that the solution value of x lies between. So it lies between 1.5 and So what we do now is we write down all the x values we can think of to two decimal places that lie between 1.45 and 1.5. So start at the smaller x value, 1.45. So we've got 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 
1.49. So you now ask yourself, what do all of these red values round to, to one decimal place? Well, the second digit after the decimal point, these are all five or more. So that means you're going to have to round up the first decimal place. So these are all going to round to 1.5 to one decimal place. Now, if these values all round to 1.5, to one decimal place and the solution value also lies in here well then the solution value is going to round to 1.5 to one decimal place so our final answer x equals 1.5 to one decimal place now again we can check to see if we're right we have found the solution value to one decimal place that gives us the closest output to the target number. Remember, the target number here is 10. So what we're saying is there is no other x value to one decimal place that gives you an output value closer to the target number. So let's look at, back at our table at all the x values to one decimal place. There only are two of them. So which one gives you the output value closest to the target number? Remember that the target number is 10. So we've got 10.5 and we've got 9.24. Well, 10.5 is closer to the target number than 9.24 is. So that's why 1.5 is the solution value of this equation to one decimal place.